We're here to talk about uh, Rotary, the next generation. And obviously we are here at a membership and public image uh, conference, are we not? And I think to tie in the reason why I'm here right now is that I am fortunate enough to be part of a club that has had success this year in membership. And we've inducted 18 new members into our club since July 1st, and we specifically uh, targeted just the right people that we wanted in our club, and we were looking for that next generation of Rotarians, that next generation of leaders in our community. And so with being able to have this type of membership su success this year, I tell you, our club has just been on fire. And to have that kind of culture in a club and that kind of energy, it's the type of thing people want to be a part of. So I'm going to share some of that with you tonight as to uh, um, you know, what we did and, uh, and what our role in, uh, was in that. Now, the first thing I want to say, though, is that tonight is going to be a little bit more about why it's important to do that. And then tomorrow, I'm going to do a workshop and I'm talking more about how we were able to have 18 new members in our club this year. So um, I've got a great book here. Has anyone read this in the room? Except I know Ken Hodge has. He's the one that turned me on to it. Uh, this guy, Simon Sinek, he is uh, really coming up in, as one of the thought leaders in business right now. He wrote this book called Start With Why. And the whole concept is that people don't really care how you do it. They don't really care what you do. They don't care who's involved or where it takes place unless they buy into the why, the whole reason behind why what you do. And if you think about growing your club, club members, prospective members, don't care about what your club does until they can buy into why you do it. And I think it's really important to really focus on why Rotary exists and why we do what we do in the world. So tonight, I'm going to talk about the why of, of bringing on board the next generation of Rotarians, and then tomorrow, we'll talk about the how. So, a uh, couple of tidbits about me. I think Kat mentioned I, I am recently married. I have a five-year-old stepdaughter and a newborn son. He is three weeks and two days old right now. And I'm really pleased to say that they are my wives, so I, I couldn't resist. I had to put in a couple slides. That's my wife, <laughs> Melissa. That's my daughter, Natty. And this is Ryan Alexander Davidson, three weeks old. So, thanks. You know, I, the other reason for putting this up here is I know you can't give that bad of a talk if you have this slide in your presentation. <laughs> so, I want to tell you a story about my first Rotary meeting. My first Rotary meeting was not at the Rotary Club of Newport News, which is my club now. My first Rotary meeting, uh, I was 25 years old. I was living in the uh, DC metro area, and one of my associates that I knew from another networking group said, oh, you've got to come to a Rotary meeting. You really enjoy that. You need to go to Rotary. I said, what is Rotary? I didn't really know much about Rotary, I'll be honest with you, at 25. I probably couldn't have told you the difference between the Rotary Club and the Moose Lodge. You know, I just really didn't see the distinction in my head. I didn't know what Rotary was, and so he said, come to Rotary. And so I did. I went to a Rotary Club, and I walked into the room, and, you know, I, they were great, great guys, great group of people, but I walked away, even though I loved, you know, that lunch, I really had a great time, but I did not join the Rotary Club. Um, I took a picture of that club while I was there. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, it, 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 once again, I mean, nothing wrong. I mean, it was a, it was a great club, uh, but I just didn't find anything in common with the people who were there. And you know, when you have that kind of experience, especially at age 25, you know, it, it's just. Uh, it's a challenge sometimes, and I think as we talk about the perception that Rotary might have for people who are non-Rotarians, you know, this might actually, you know, this might actually come into play a little bit here. So that was my first Rotary meeting. Now my second Rotary meeting was after I moved out of DC and came back to Newport News, my hometown. I was five years older, maybe a little bit wiser, but uh, someone invited me to come to Rotary again. And I said, well, I've been to Rotary before. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is something that's, you know, a group of people that's really involved in the community, that uh, I have an opportunity to meet other business people and maybe current community leaders that I can learn from. He said, Chris, you have to come to our club. That's our club. 
Now, my perception of rotary was this, right? So I reluctantly said yes, and I went to the meeting. I saw something completely different than this. When I went to that meeting, they were vibrant. They were energetic. I mean, people joking around with each other, having a great time. Uh, they were involved in all these projects in the community, and we had a guy talking about building bridges in Africa, and they were going to send a team there, and I thought, goodness gracious, this is what I've been looking for. I had no idea, because I knew I wanted to be a, a leader of some kind eventually, but I didn't know really what path to take. I walked into that Rotary Club, and I knew I had found it. Big difference between the first Rotary Club I went to, and then the next one I went to, which is the one I joined. Just like there was a big difference in the first good evening and then the second good evening, right? It's a big difference. So, you know, those things really, you know, they, they, they do come into play. The type of club that you create, the type of culture that you create, really determines who comes and who is attracted to your club. You know, in my first Rotary meeting as a Rotarian, after I was accepted by the board and inducted, a gentleman in our club named Ken France stood up and made an announcement about uh, this opportunity of uh, the bridge building that we were doing. It was a 3-H grant that we had been working on for two years prior to me joining the club, and it was in Africa. And he said, who wants to go to Africa round trip with the club? My hand shot up. I couldn't resist. I put my hand right in the air. That sounded really cool. That's one of the reasons why I joined, and I got to do it. And the really cool thing is that we got to go there, and I went with Ken Hodge, who's right here in the room. It was me, Ken, and his wife, Cindy, and went on this bridge as a prosperity trip. And the, I, the opportunity to be exposed to a culture that is completely different, driving hours through weeds that are taller than your truck and coming out to, to, to be greeted by villagers who are singing to you through the windows of your truck and praising that you're there. And, and I tell you, the effect that the bridges had on these people is immense. It was an awesome trip. The only problem was that nobody wanted to talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, literally. I, if I hadn't joined Rotary, I never would have gotten to see this. This is a real picture. This is where we were staying the last four days of our trip. And as you can see, um, hard day at the watering hole for him. As, as you can see, he went from one watering hole to another. That's a bar in the background there. <laughs> so anyway, this is actually what we were there for. This is a, a, a bridge that we built with our club in conjunction with Bridges to Prosperity. So. Really interesting, I mean, to be able, I, I had no idea that there were these kind of challenges with people in this particular area of the world and all over the world in the developing world, where during the rainy season, waters flood past at rapid rates and wash kids away. I mean, sometimes they die trying to go to school. And this bridge made the difference between uh, a child who may be suffering from malaria, having to walk around the water for half a day, versus being able to walk to a clinic that might only take an hour, and those hours save lives. And to have been a part of something and to be there to experience it was incredible for me. That is what sealed me as a permanent Rotarian in my life. I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about perception. That is why we're here. We're here, we're here to talk about public image, right? I want to ask you a question. It's a true or false question, okay? So first, uh, I, I want to ask a question, and then we'll see what you guys think. Uh, you are what people say you are. Okay, how many of you think true? You are what you say you are. True? Or you are what people say you are. True? Okay, false? Okay, I, obviously the real answer to that question is false. You are who you are, or you are who God made you, right? You are who people say you are. Can that be true? Yes. It can, because in the eye of the person who is the beholder, that's their perception, therefore that's their reality. You know perception is reality, right? So we talk about perception. If your perception of rotary is blank, then to that person, that is true. And unfortunately, you know, rotary had had some perception difficulties. And uh, I saw an email from Ann Matthews that came out, I guess about two months ago. I'm sure a lot of you saw this, uh, a Rotarian in Polaris, Ohio, his name is C. Lee Smith. He is the CEO of a research firm. And last October, he did a study where they uh, interviewed hundreds of adults in that particular area of Ohio 
who said that they knew a little bit about Rotary. In other words, they may know a, a Rotarian, or they might know somebody who knows someone who's a Rotarian, but they've heard of it. And they asked them a series of questions. And from that study, they came up with the top 10 things that the average person who's a, not a Rotarian in that area thought about Rotary. So, if perception is reality, then here's other people's reality about Rotary. A, Rotary's an old boys club. B, Rotary is only for business people. C, Rotary is not very diverse. D, Rotary isn't much fun. E, Rotary must invite you to participate. F through J, I like those a lot better. Rotarians care about the community, absolutely. Rotarians are honest, yes. Rotarians are social and outgoing. Rotarians are leaders, and many would consider Rotary if asked. So that's all positive. So if you look at the first five, that's an area of improvement that we can tackle. F through J, that's great. Those are great perceptions to have. So we know that the last five on there, those are reality. And unfortunately, A through E are reality for some people that haven't been exposed to that type of Rotary Club that I walked into that I wanted to join three years ago. You know, I think one thing that has quite a bit to do with attracting the next generation of leaders is the role that Rotary plays in the community. Let's talk about Rotary's roles, right? Rotary is obviously a community service organization. That's a role. Rotary is also a global humanitarian organization, right? That's a role. One role that I don't hear uh, specifically talked about or addressed pertaining to Rotary, obviously we all know it, but it's not something that we actively talk about, is Rotary's role in developing and mentoring community leaders in each of the respective communities. I call Rotary a generational leadership incubator. You know, an incubator, if you think of like a business incubator, it's where they, you know, they give you office space and they give you a little funding and they help give you coaching and help you get your business off the ground. Or if you think of like an incubator, like with, uh, you know, with chickens and eggs, right? They keep them warm and they keep them in a nice environment and, until they're ready to hatch. And that's kind of like what Rotary does for upcoming leaders in communities. And I think of all the roles that Rotary does, all the fantastic things that Rotary Clubs do, I think that is a critically important role in each of the respective communities. Now we know that there's a Rotary Club in almost every community around the world. So if each Rotary Club in each community takes that role seriously, we develop better leaders. That means we develop better quality of life in our communities. So if you realize that that is a role of Rotary and you focus on that, and you realize that that is something that that next generation is interested in, that's something that you can fly with. You see, when I talk about the next generation of leaders, let's talk about who we're actually talking about. I'm not necessarily talking about uh, new generations, which would be the Interact Clubs and the Rotaract Clubs. I'm talking about just a little bit older than that, maybe in that late 20s, probably more like early 30s to 40s range. These folks who have finally, you know, they've established their roots and, and they've really started to hit their stride in business or whatever it is that they do. And they're looking to do that next thing. They're looking to get involved in something like this. That's who we're talking about. And that is what you call that new blood that you get and, and have all that energy and all that drive in a particular organization. Now, I do know that uh, although worldwide membership of Rotary has gone up, I think everyone here knows that U.S. membership has been going down. And part of what had happened was either this perception problem or the fact that that next generation was not getting engaged. I'm going to tell you, one of the big reasons is because there's so much else out there distracting them, they don't even know about this. Now, tomorrow in my workshop, I'm going to talk about all those things that are out there to distract them, where to find them, who to, who to look for, how to identify them, how to engage them, how to get them interested, how to convert them to members, how to keep them there. That's the how. Remember, tonight's about the why. So let's keep talking about the why. I recently saw a list of founding members of our club. It was provided to me by Ken Hodge. Our club was established in 1916. And I looked at the list. <laughs> he wasn't there. 
I looked at the list, and I, I saw all of these names. You know, I saw I saw a name like Huntington, and he's the one that started the Newport News Shipyard, and it's one of the biggest shipbuilding operations in the world. And I saw names that you know are on streets in my hometown. And I was like, wow, these guys were founding members of our Rotary Club? That was pretty amazing to me. And it really kind of hit me that Rotary is a place where, you know, leaders of the community come and, and band together and combine their resources and strengths. That's something I want to be a part of. And you know what? When you talk about this, you talk about also the importance of embracing all the generations of that particular leadership progression in a community. For instance, I think it's awesome that in our Rotary Club, we saw several members who are part of what I still call the greatest generation, that World War II generation. Give you a story, my grandmother is almost 90 years old. She still runs our family business and goes in three days a week. That's awesome, she is a hero to me. And we have people like that in our Rotary Club. And we, of course, have people from the baby boomer generation in our Rotary Club, you know? And these are people that have taken the reins and are really starting to run, you know, things in our community. But then we've got this Generation X, and I, I am, you would call me a Generation X, a Gen Xer, right? And you, you think about Generation X. One thing you need to know about Generation X is that there's quite a dichotomy in Generation X. In Generation X, they're either doing nothing and taking up space in their parents' basement still, or they're trying to grab the world by the tail and shove it in their pocket, right? And it's the latter that you're looking for for the Rotary Clubs, obviously. But we're out there. We are out there. And we want to join. We just don't know about it. So you've got to engage them. And one thing you've got to understand is that Generation Xers, we want to make an impact right away. And sometimes we need to be taught patience. But we need these mentors in our lives. All right? We really do. And I have benefited so much just in the past three years from mentors like Ken and other people in my Rotary Club in my life. And of course, you've got what they call Gen Y and the Millennials, which are just kind of coming out of college or just entering the workforce. They're not in Rotary yet, but they're going to be. Are you prepared? Because they're completely different than all the rest of us. <laughs> I at least can say that I'm in a generation where I, I do remember a time when there was no internet. Okay? I can say that. These are people that, guess what? They haven't, they haven't known anything that was an instant information. And that's why sometimes they have that sense of entitlement, you know, and they just are impatient to, to just, you know, well, I want to come out of college and start, you know, with six figures and be able to put my feet up on my desk. Well, it doesn't work that way. But Rotary is the organization that needs to help these people out when they start coming into our clubs in the next five to ten years. You know, Rotary presents a unique and highly effective vehicle for current community leaders to learn from the wisdom of the more senior leaders. And emerging leaders get the benefit to be mentored by both generations that preceded them. Now, let's talk about why it is so important to engage the next generation of Rotary. So what's in it for us, right? Why? First of all, we can help to demolish those first five perceptions up there, can't we? If you have a membership of 60 members and 15 to 20 of them are in that early 30s, late 30s, early 40s crowd, you can't really say it's an old boys club. If you have other kinds of diversity, such as people who are into different types of things other than just you know, business, then you can get rid of that one. Diversity is really important. And if you have these things going on, if you have a good energetic club, then you can't say D, you can't say Rotary's not much fun because just the fact that you have these people together is gonna make it fun. All right, Rotary must invite you to participate. Well, you know, different clubs feel different ways about that, right? Uh, we only want certain kinds of people. Well, you know, are you, are you possibly shooting yourself in the foot with that attitude, right? Sure, you have to be proposed as a member to the board and everything, but don't you want people to feel like they can come to Rotary if they want to be a part of something that makes a difference without having to wait to be invited? So I think these perceptions can be knocked out by engaging these Gen Xers and really finding those ones in the community that are doing big things or about to. Get them into Rotary. 
You know, I have uh, five personal recruits into Rotary this year. Uh, two of them went to other clubs, and the three that are in my club are awesome. <laughs> the other two. The other two, they, they're, 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 they're pretty good too. Now, these are a couple of my personal recruits. Tim, I think we're about the same age. He's 34 years old. He owns his own strategy consulting company. He works with businesses on their web strategy and on their uh, go-to-market strategy. He's an ex-Marine, super, super intelligent. This guy comes right in, starts getting involved in everything, coming to board meetings, he wants to be involved. He will probably be a president of our club at some point. This right here is Rhiannon. Again, sharp as a tack. I mean, and she also owns her own business. She owns a, a staffing company and she places, uh, you know, executives in, in different firms and, and makes fees from that. So it's like headhunting organization. She started it and she's killing it. And she came right in and just saw that we had an area where we needed some help in our social media and just took it over and within two weeks had it completely turned around and all of our clubs engaged in it. Uh, by the way, Rhiannon approached me about joining Rotary because of all my posts on Facebook about the things that we were doing. True story. So, if you want to learn more about that, go to the other Chris's workshop tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, um, you know, as I look at these two, though, and I can't forget my mom. She's also a personal recruit of mine. As I look at my, my people here, I'm just really proud of them. And I see those future leaders in our community. I see someone like Rhiannon. And as I'm talking to Rhiannon, and I say to myself, I ask a question, can I see this person in Rotary? This person needs to be in Rotary. And I say to Rhiannon, you need to come to Rotary. The same way that my friend Tu Ritter did for me. Right? I did that with Tim. And he was a student in one of my sales training seminars. And we started talking afterwards. I realized that this guy has really got it together. He's really smart. He needs to be in Rotary. So I invited him to Rotary. And then another guy, and he, he's, this is one of the ones that went to another club, did my website for me, my new website. I said, wow, this guy's really got together. He's uh, actually 33 years old, has his own business, and is involved in a bunch of other boards and, and that type of thing in the community. I said, he needs to be in Rotary. And he came and joined Rotary. So, you know, I, I think that continuing to engage these next generation of leaders is so critically important that if we don't do it, we really could be hurting ourselves if you don't focus on it. It's one thing to focus on membership, but to actually target the emerging leaders in the, in the community is something different. You know, in every organization, there are obviously leaders and followers, right? And I know it has been said frequently that Rotary is an organization of leaders. When you have leaders coaching leaders, that's where you can't be stopped. It's kind of like the whole teaching thing, you know, um, teaching or coaching. It's one thing to actually do it, but to be able to teach somebody how to do it is a whole new level. But then the level after that is to be able to teach someone how to teach, right? And I think that we have that in developing leaders in Rotary. You have a lot more energy and a lot more vitality in your club when you do this. And I think that's something that people see in our club when they come to it. We have six, seven, eight, nine guests almost every week at our club because you know, people just want to bring their friends to be a part of it. That's what it is. They just have to bring somebody. And it's really exciting. Now let's talk about why they want to join Rotary. So since we're focusing on why, what's in it for them? I saw uh, in one of the workshops that was in the other room, you guys put some papers on board and you had brainstormed, I think, 20, it looked like benefits of joining Rotary. And they, they were all spot on. Whoever's workshop that was, I'm sure it was awesome because here's what's in it for them. They have access to community leaders in a venue that sets them as equals. And then you don't find that all the time. Uh, one of my friends in our club, is uh, his name's David Yancey, he's in the Virginia General Assembly, he's a delegate. And when you see him out in public, it's Delegate Yancey. When he's in Rotary, it's Rotarian David, right? That's part of Rotary. And so to be in an organization that's full of community leaders, but your set is equal and then actually invited to come to board meetings and maybe even sit on the board of an organization like a Rotary club, 
that is really, really awesome for someone like me who hadn't been able to do that before, right? So that's one thing that's in it for them. What about mentorship? Mentorship, that could be a whole separate talk on its own. That is critical for people that you're trying to mold into these future leaders. What else is in it for them? Why not just say it? Business opportunities. A lot of these emerging leaders either just started their own businesses or they're like I was, you know, I was in copier sales and, you know, I, I wanted to meet customers and I wanted to meet people uh, to do business with. Well, isn't that one of the reasons why Paul Harris started Rotary, right? As a, a group of business people that got together to do business and then they also did good in the community and it grew from there. I don't think it's a bad or a dirty word to say, let's do business together. That's part of our whole vocational arm of Rotary and as an avenue of service. It's a training ground for other future leadership roles as well. So being in Rotary and going to board meetings and being able to see how a board works, that's really important to someone who's in their late 20s or early 30s just getting into that level of leadership. And Rotary is a great training ground, particularly for a good club, if you have a really good club with a good board. So now, you know, at 34, I, I've, I've been able to run a board as a club president, and that's given me some great experience to be able to do even more things uh, as I progress through my career. You know, it also opens up their eyes to a bigger picture of what service is really all about. Because this is true service above self. We don't just say it, all right? It is really true, and they get to see what that really means. Talk about going to Africa. We're going to go back to Africa in our club, or I think we're going to do another international trip here soon. And Rhiannon and Tim both told me they want to go. So um, let's wrap up here and talk about, so now that we know what's in it for them, we know what's in it for us, we know what's in it for them. So that's a big part of the why. Let's talk about something else that plays into this, because this whole time we've been talking about generational stuff, the different generations, right? You could call that generational diversity, which is very important, right? You don't want your entire club to be chronologically challenged, I don't know, right? You want generational diversity, but that is not the only type of diversity that's out there. You've also got vocational diversity. Yes, we do have seven bankers in our club, but we also have lots of other different awesome uh, vocations that I never would have even thought of in our club. I mean. Everything from, uh, well, my mom owns a dance studio. I don't think, you know, a lot of Rotary clubs can say that they have a classically trained ballerina in their club, right? <laughs> we have vocational diversity. What other kinds of diversity? How about gender diversity? Well, I think it's great that so many Rotary clubs are, you know, are approaching that 50-50 mark in male-female. Our club's about 41, 42% now. By the way, our club would not even function without the women in our club. I'm a president sandwiched between four women presidents, the last two and the next two. So, I mean, I think that you have to embrace gender diversity. What about ethnic diversity? That's also hugely important. It really is, especially in these days, all right? Ge geographic diversity, right? Geographic diversity, of course, your Rotary Club serves your area of town, but do you invite people to your Rotary Club from the other side of the railroad tracks? Because if you want your club to serve your community, you need to be able to serve your entire community. And if you invite people from other parts of the community that you don't normally go, you'll get a whole different perspective of what the needs are in your community. And we have that going on in our club too right now. I would even say, it's a touchy subject, but I'm going to say it, political diversity. You got political diversity in Rotary too. I'm going to tell you something. I, I am into politics. I'm not going to talk about it up here, but I do enjoy talking about politics. But you know what? In our club, we have Democrats, we have Republicans, we have Independents, and we all we all get along. We all have fun with each other. We joke about things. You know, we might you know write write each other a little bit on certain things, but it's never a mean spirited the way politics has turned out to be these days. Right? Could you imagine if all of the politicians, could you imagine if all, what is it, 535 members of Congress were Rotarians? <laughs> and if every member of Congress abided by the four way test? They'd have to go home. They have to go home. <laughs> How would that look? Right? I think we'd be in a little bit better situation right now. Guess who the future Congress people are? 
It's the people that I'm talking about right here. It's people like Tim and her, right? Get them into Rotary. Get them into the four-way test. Get them into service above self. It's up to us, right? So this is about diversity. Vocational, gender, generational, ethnic, geographical, political, all kinds of diversity can only make your club stronger. Now, I don't know if this is a new way of thinking for some Rotary clubs, I suspect it might be, but it has to be the way that it is now. Because if we don't, we suffer the possibility of becoming less relevant. Of course, Rotary is never going to go away, but if membership's declining, I'm going to tell you, I, I work with companies, I do revenue generation, your company is either growing or it's dying. It's either up or it's down, it's never stagnant, it's never straight across. Same thing for Rotary. If membership's going down, it's got to go back up. And this is the way to do it. So, diversity is about being inclusive rather than exclusive. Inclusive rather than exclusive. Do you say that your club is exclusive or would you rather be inclusive? It's, a, it's kind of about the attitude that you foster in your Rotary Club. And if you do that, you'll help prospective members who come in and may not look like everybody in your club feel more comfortable because they can identify with people that they meet there, or at least because they feel welcome, right? And if someone is in that situation where they feel like they might be in the minority in whatever category of diversity we're talking about, you know that their barriers are heightened already. Mm. And the slightest little thing could make them not come back. So it needs to be part of our culture, not just in the clubs, but in Rotary in general, that we are inclusive and diverse. It also greatly increases our ability to serve our community like I said, right, this was one of our uh, induction ceremonies last year, and we inducted four members on the same day. And I'm really pleased to say it was a very diverse uh, induction. And the really cool thing is just the, the dichotomy of, of what you can see here. I mean, there's one person in this picture who owns one of the biggest real estate companies in the entire Hampton Roads area. And there's another person in this picture that grew up poor, became a church pastor, and now has a program where he literally feeds thousands of kids in our area that can't afford school lunches every single week. And those two, the two of them, their paths may never have crossed, right? But in Rotary, at our club at least, it did. And that has strengthened our club. Diversity also presents a major vehicle for personal growth of the people engaging in the inclusiveness because you get to learn about other subcultures of people in your community. And of course, it creates friendships that may not have otherwise ever happened. So I want to finish by just talking about what Rotary means to me as a Rotarian, as a Gen Xer, if you want to call me that. I can say honestly that I could not imagine my life without Rotary right now. I love it. I really do. I've dedicated so much time this year as a club president, but I've loved every single minute of it. Being a club president has meant the world to me and been the best thing I've ever done in my life. Joining Rotary has been one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. You know, I also found that if you tell Rotarians about your dreams, they will help you make it happen. I think that's something magical that's happening in clubs too, because I may not have started my own sales training company if it weren't for the encouragement and the mentorship of people in my club. And I did it. And, and it's going well. And I've got to say that Rotary has had a lot to do with that. There are hundreds of eager, young, talented people in your areas. All of your clubs and your districts have them. They're out there. Where are they? Who are they? We can talk about that tomorrow morning. How do you get them? We'll talk about that. Our club's done a good job at it. Well, you seek them out. You invite them. Take them under your wing. Don't just bring them to Rotary and induct them and then leave them. Take them under your wing. Include them in things and then take a personal interest and develop them. That's how it happens. My closing thought is that Rotary can become an even more powerful 
and even more influential organization in the world and become a better and more powerful agent for good in this world than we even are right now. We may not have even seen in over a hundred years the full potential of what Rotary is capable of, right? It could be a lot more. It's uh, right now, it's polio, right? And we're this close, right? This close, Did someone get that? <laughs> okay, so it's polio now. Maybe next, you know, after that, maybe it's malaria. Of course, the ultimate goal would be this right here. This is what uh, President Tanaka set forth for us this year. Could Rotary be the agent of change on this planet that brings us peace? Universal world peace? Could that happen? If we start saying no, then we're not thinking big enough. The people in this room and the people in Rotary are the ones who can do it. But we need others to join us. And that only happens one way, through you and me. It's up to us. So let's do it. Thanks.